Welcome to this painting tutorial. How's it going everyone? Welcome to this video. In this video I will paint one of the chain rasps from the Soul Wars set. This model uses few colors and the only challenging part is blending the white ghostly cape. The rest of the model is very straightforward and can be painted very fast. If you find this video helpful, don't forget that you can support my channel by liking, commenting, sharing and subscribing. Let's get started. I'm going to start by priming the model in grey. For that I use Vallejo Surface Primer Grey through an airbrush. You can use any other color that you like. I would suggest using a light primer such as a Corex White or any similar primer so that you can start from a very light base. We want a light primer because the first color that I'm going to use is Ionark Skin and because this color is very light and we have a very light base it's going to be super easy to cover. So I'm going to use this and all on the face, on the hands and on all of the lower cape of the chain rasp. As always make sure to thin down your paint so you don't cover detail and um, if it doesn't cover that well when, whenever you're painting any of these colors uh, leave it like that, paint it as you're painting it and let it dry and apply a second coat after it's dry. That way you minimize the amount, the amount of uh, brush strokes and paint crumbs that you create while painting. Next comes the tricky part. I'm going to thin down Night Haunt Gloom about two to one, two water and one part uh, paint. And this color I'm going to use it all around the cape as a very thin wash that it's more like a glaze. I want to tint all of the area, but I'm not worrying about trying to get into all of the recesses or anything like that. I just want to tint it. That's the first step. Uh, once that's done, I'm going to come back and paint it more towards the top and towards the recesses so that I get a deeper color on those areas. But uh, for now, I'm just tinting all of the skin and all of the lower cape. Once that's done, it's look, gonna look a little bit patchy, that's okay. I'm going to come back with Night, Night Haunt Gloom and I'm going to use this towards the top and towards the recesses as I explained earlier. Just make sure to let uh, each of these uh, steps dry. If you live in a place where uh, it's uh, very humid, it's gonna take a little while. So you might want to paint a lot of these at the same time. At the end, it only matters that you do a nice transition if you're going to for a high standard. Uh, if you have a little bit of patchiness here and there, it's gonna have, make like a watercolor effect that is gonna look good, in my opinion, so it's fine. Once it's done, I'm going to use Deep Kin Flesh and I'm going to thin this color a little bit more than normal and use very thin layers. I'm going to glaze this color as best as I can and I'm going to feather it towards the top of the cape. I'm going to apply very patchy, very light um, layers that are going to go towards the darkest parts of the cape. And uh, you don't need to be very clean at this step. If you use thin paint, it's gonna look patchy, that's fine. Just leave it like that, let it dry. Once it's dry, come back and give it another coat. The face and the hands will take the same treatment, but we don't need to uh, do any transition. Just uh, cover most of the area, leaving the uh, recesses on the previous color. Once it's done and dry, I'm going to repeat this uh, previous step and I'm going to do it just a little bit lower this time and leaving a little bit of the previous colors behind so that this color progresses into lighter and lighter colors, but still using thin paint. And I think I repeated these four times, just uh, a little bit lower each time, and uh, then that's it. Just make sure to let every uh, layer dry before you apply the next one. If you are having paint drying and you move it around, it might break the layer and create crumbs and brush marks. Once we're happy with that, I'm going to use Vallejo model color white. You can use uh, white scar if you want. With this color, I'm going to edge highlight all of the edges of the cape and all of the most prominent parts of the face and hands. I'm going to try to focus it on the knuckles, the top of the bridge of the nose and the cheekbones, the teeth, the jaw and any sharp edge like that, the tip of the fingers and all of the edges around the cape and that's it. That's it. Once that's done, we're done with the most difficult part of this model. We're going to move in to paint the cowl or the hood. 
and I'm going to use Vallejo model color black and with this color I'm just going to cover all those areas. With thin down color it may not cover the first time, give it a second coat if it doesn't once it's dry and uh, just be very careful not to get into any of the light colored areas that we previously painted because fixing those is going to be a little bit difficult so just try to do this carefully. Once it's done I'm going to use dry at bark and with this color I'm going to paint all of the wood areas around the model. It's usually just the handles and pieces of wood around the model or the base and uh, just paint it with this color as the same way that we did the black. Once it's done I'm going to paint the metal areas with lead belcher and with this color I'm going to paint just the chains and the weapon and that's pretty much it. Any other detail that it's metallic painted this color and make sure to thin it down so it doesn't apply thick. Uh, this color becomes tacky very fast. Once we covered all of the colors on this model, I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade. And with this color, I'm going to shade all of the areas that are not black or white, just the metal and the wood. And that's it, just make sure to completely cover these areas, being careful not to get into the other colors, especially the white, because if you do, it's gonna be hard to clean up. Uh, but this is a very simple step, just to shake your wash well and just shade these areas carefully. Once you're done, uh, you can leave the model like this. This looks finished, you can play it like this, but I'm going to continue highlighting the hood or the cowl and I'm going to use Eshin Gray. And with this color, I'm going to pick up all of the edges and all of the most raised uh, areas of the folds in the, in the cape and just uh, give it a niche highlight with this. Once that's finished, we continue the edge highlighting with Downstone and with this color I'm going to pick up the same areas but just the most brightest parts and the most sharpest edges and I'm going to make an extreme highlight uh, just leaving a little bit of the color behind and trying to do it a little bit thinner uh, with this highlight. Once it's done, I'm going to use Gorthor Brown to highlight the wood and with this color I'm going to try and uh, edge highlight those uh, wood grains around the, the wood and try to pick up all of the edges if it has any. In this part it doesn't have any edges but the top and bottom and it has a little bit of a grain on, of, or texture on the, on the shaft. So we'll try to pick those areas with this color. If the wood areas on your model have a, a bit more uh, sharpest edges, you can use carrot, carrot stone and apply it only on the sharpest edges. And in this case, I'm just going to use it on the top and bottom. And to start rusting those chains and metals, I'm going to start with typhus corrosion. And I'm going to use this color around these metal areas, just in a patchy and in little patches here and there, not in the entire thing. And I'm going to try to distribute it randomly around it, but at the same time, a little bit consistent. So it's all around the areas, but uh, leaving patches of, uh, of very concentrated corrosion and very like lightly corroded metal. Once it's done, I'm going to start applying the rust. And for that, I'm going to use Riser Rust. And this is a dry paint. I'm going to do as dry as a dry brush as I can and apply it very lightly all over the metal just to make sure it catches on the typhus corrosion. And, and all around the model where you think it should be more rusted, you can go a little bit harder with this. But uh, in general, you have to do it very lightly just to make sure uh, you don't overdo it. And this is the finished model. This is a very easy model to paint despite having the transition of white and very bright colors. If you start from a light base and you apply these colors as a glazes uh, towards the bottom of the ghostly cape, you're going to have good results. And uh, I, I like this a lot more than dry brushing, so I think this is a very successful uh, miniature and I hope you enjoyed it too. So that's it, thank you very much for watching this video. I had a lot of fun painting this model and I hope this video helps you paint your chain rasps. 
If you find it enjoyable and helpful, please make sure to like this video, comment on it, and subscribe to the channel to see more videos in the future. I'll be working on more Soul Wars soon, and thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you on the next video. You stayed. Great. Thank you very much for supporting my channel, and if you would like to become a patron, there is a link to my Patreon page in the description below. Your contributions help pay for my work and keeps the channel going. A single dollar a month is more than enough and you can cancel at any time. If you can't, don't worry, you can support my channel by simply watching my videos and sharing them with your friends. Thank you for watching, have a great day and I'll see you on the next one.